Assalamu alaikum. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah. Hayya la salah. Hayya la salah. Hayya la falah. Hayya la falah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illa Allah. Alhamdulillah, inna alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiru, wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakkalu alayhi. ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يحده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم وقال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن العظيم بعد عوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس تقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء وتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما إن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Alhamdulillah, we start by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We seek his help and his forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah from the evil of our own souls. We believe in him and we rely upon him. Whomsoever Allah guides, no one can lead astray. And whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leaves to stray, no one can guide apart from him. I bear witness that there is no God except Allah. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his messenger. Dear brothers and sisters, Allah Tabarak wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, O you who believe, be mindful of Allah as is his right, and make sure you devote yourself to him at your moment of dying. Furthermore, Allah Tabarak wa ta'ala says, O people, be mindful of your Lord who created you from a single soul, and from it created its mate, and from the pair of them spread countless men and women far and wide. Be mindful of Allah in whom you make request of one another. Beware of severing the ties of kinship. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala is ever a watcher over you. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says, O you who believe, be mindful of Allah. Speak in a direct fashion and to a good purpose, and he will put your deeds right, and he will forgive you for your sins. Whoever obey, obeys Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala and his messenger will truly achieve a great triumph. Alhamdulillah, the best of speech is the speech of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. And the best guidance is that of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the most evil of affairs are those newly invented matters in religion. Every newly invented matter is a strain, and every strain leads to the fire. Wa iyyadu billah. Alhamdulillah, it's a great blessing of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala that Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala has given us Islam. Everything that Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala has commanded us to do is for our own benefit. And according to Islam, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala commands us to come together on Yom Al-Jumu'ah. Come together on the best of days. 
is referred to as the Eid of the week. On this day, Allah Ta'ala created Adam. On this day will be the day of judgment. It will be the final day, the blowing of the horn. And Allah Ta'ala saved this day of gathering for the ummah of his beloved Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we should rejoice, dear brothers and sisters, in the order of Allah and coming together. And we see that everything that Allah Ta'ala commands us to do, as I stated, is for our own good. Especially in today's times, dear brothers and sisters, we have seen how difficult it can be to be isolated from one another, right? We just spent several years, you know, under uh, strict adherence to safety and health standards with COVID, where we experienced long periods of time being isolated from our friends, our families, our loved ones. And in that moment, one of the things that we realized is how important it is for us to come together, right? And something so simple, something so obviously beneficial and healthy for us, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala did not leave that out. He commanded that we come together, that we come together in prayer, that we come together for Yomul Jumu'ah, right? So often Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is commanding us to come together. There's something in us being together, the brothers and sisters that we can't experience in being separate. Sometimes we allow ourselves to get so busy, you know, in fulfilling our needs and the needs of those who we're responsible for, that we become isolated. You know, it requires a great deal of effort sometimes just for us to go and visit our loved ones, right? So Allah Ta'ala has made it mandatory that we come together on this day so that no matter what's going on in our lives, we have to come together on Juma. We have to see each other. So we come together on this day, dear brothers and sisters, to remember Allah Tabarak wa ta'ala, to remember our need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because oftentimes, you know, depending on how Allah Tabarak wa ta'ala has blessed the human being, sometimes the body becomes so strong. Sometimes, you know, the bank account becomes so full. You know, sometimes uh, uh, there's so much popularity that we get the feeling that we're self-sufficient. And Allah warns us about this in the Quran, that a person can become so ungrateful that they think of themselves as being independent of Allah, self-sufficient. So we come together on this day, dear brothers and sisters, to remind ourselves that we are in need of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, and Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala is Ghaniul Hamid. He's the one who does not need anyone. But we, at every moment in our lives, are in desperate need of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. And so we find that as we move through this life, we often need this reminder. We often need to reflect on how often and how absolute our need is of Allah. That even to move from this position to the door, we need Allah. But we are so familiar with Allah fulfilling our intentions to move that we think we can do it on our own. Just from the niyyah in our mind and in our heart to move our hand, Allah has fulfilled that intention so quickly and so, so, uh, so frequently that we move and we think we're moving on our own. But sometimes Allah Tabarak wa ta'ala shows us through certain conditions, that with one decree, we wouldn't be able to move. With one decree, we might be able to get the food to our mouth, but it may not be able to go all the way down. It might choke us right in the middle. Something so often that we've done, we've taken for granted that, oh yeah, once I get it in my mouth, it's good, it's gone. <laughs> but even in that moment, dear brothers and sisters, we're in need of Allah. We're, we're in constant need of Allah's decree. And so when we look at the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we see our example. We see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam constantly advising and instructing his Sahabas to be mindful of their need of Allah. It comes in a hadith once that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed by a man with his Sahaba. And this person was deaf, this person was blind, this person was crippled, right? And he told his Sahaba, he said, do you see any mercy of Allah on this person? 
And they looked at this person. They said, no, Ya Rasulullah, we don't see any mercy on this person. And the Prophet ﷺ said, can this person not go to the bathroom and relieve themselves with ease? And so sometimes it requires a little more focus, a little more reflection to see where the mercy of Allah is taking place in our lives. And again, he pointed out something that for us, you know, we don't think very often about that. We go, we do what we have to do, and it's a very small part of our day. It's not something that we would recount to our wives and our husbands when we come home. We say, how was your day? We don't talk about that part. <laughs> we take that for granted, right? That's not a big deal. But I think with a small amount of reflection, we would realize just how important every single blessing Allah has working in our lives would be if he took it from us. You see? And so in order to protect our hearts and our attitudes and our souls from the, the consequences of forgetfulness, from the consequences and the effects of being unmindful of Allah's blessings in our lives, as he stated, there's so many that we can't even count them. We can't even count the ways in which Allah's blessings are taking effect in our lives. So in order to protect ourselves from, from the, the, the damaging effects of being unmindful of Allah's blessings, we come together for this purpose on Yom Al-Jumu. Alhamdulillah to see our brothers that we haven't seen in a while. But we want to make the main point of our coming here to reflect on Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala and our need of Him. And when we reflect on our need of Him, we ought to feel more inspired to serve Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, right? Sometimes it might happen in our lives that someone does us a great favor, right? And depending on the magnitude of that favor, you know, and our moment of need, if somebody comes at, at a time when, when, when we're in desperate need and the consequences are so severe, you know, that person who shows up, you know, at three o'clock in the morning, we, 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 we have a love and, a, and an appreciation for that person, but also uh, we feel a sense of wanting to give back, right? To show that person how much that meant to us, you know, not that we want to repay that person, but just to show them how much we appreciate them being for there, for, there for us. We feel this reaction where we want to show our gratitude. So this is a natural reaction in people. When a favor is done, we want to show our gratitude. And so by reflecting on how many ways in which Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala is servicing us, is taking care of our needs, is managing our affairs, is keeping us safe as we move here and there, something ought to emerge in us where we want to show Allah our gratitude in this way, where we want to demonstrate to Allah that we appreciate Him. Dear brothers and sisters, this is Islam. This is what we do to show Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala our appreciation for all the things that he's given to us. And all of the things that if he were to take, we would soon realize how much we appreciate them. How much we appreciate that hug from our mother, from our father. How much we appreciate the camaraderie of our brothers. We just buried a brother, you know, very close to us, uh, one of our uncles last uh, Thursday. And uh, alhamdulillah, you know, sometimes we have to reflect on the blessing of each other, just having someone to talk to, right? But this is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right? This is following the messenger. This is how we show our gratitude to Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, right? As Allah tabarak wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in kuntum tuhibbun Allah fattabi'uni. That say, if you love Allah, then follow the Prophet. Allah will love you and forgive you your sins, right? And so, if we want to gain the love of Allah, if we want to gain His favor, if we want to show our gratitude to Allah, there's Rasulullah. In this high standard, in this expression of faith, right? where the Prophet Sallallahu committed his entire life to showing his gratitude to Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. And when he prayed so long that his feet began to swell, 
His wife asked him about that, and he said, should I not be a grateful servant of Allah? How many nights do we spend showing our gratitude to Allah to better Ta'ala? Dear brothers, there's something missing in the way that we relate to Allah to better Ta'ala when we're not moved in this way, when we're not overcome with a sense of gratitude to show Allah to better Ta'ala that we appreciate him for all the things that we have, dear brothers. And so this is our constant and daily and lifelong agenda to show our gratitude more and more, to bring ourselves more in, in line with the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and make this connection to Allah to better Ta'ala based upon love. If you love Allah, that's the, that's the prerequisite for following the Prophet Sallallahu If you love Allah, then do this. And so we see in the coming of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a great and tremendous bounty coming from Allah whereby he opens up the pathway to his love. This is Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he opens up this way of life for us by which we can gain the love of Allah. And dear brothers, is, is the strongest evidence against us that we exert ourselves in other things more than we exert ourselves in following the way of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. More than we exert ourselves in seeking the love of Allah to better Quartal. And we can just all gauge ourselves. How many nights have we spent up going over a project? How many nights have we spent up playing a video game? How many nights has we, have we spent up watching a movie, right? But that same amount of time was one of the, the most beloved times to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to show his love and his gratitude to Allah to better Quartal. This is just, this just to show us that we have some work to do, right? That we have to hold ourselves accountable and that we shouldn't give ourselves, you know, let ourselves off the hook, right? If we're filling these spaces and these times with things other than exerting ourselves and gaining the love of Allah. How much of an indictment is it that Allah himself, the Lord of the worlds, out of all of his creation, right? Some of his creation won't, won't exist forever. Some of them are going to go back to dust, right? But here's this human being that he created from dust. He's opened up a pathway to his love, right? All of his creatures don't, don't have that guarantee. They don't, I mean, not, not to his love, but that promise of, of Abada, right? That promise of forever, right? And here he's opened up a pathway to experience his love forever. And yet we exert ourselves in the pursuit of things more than we exert ourselves in attaining the love of Allah to better quartile. So dear brothers, as we go today, as we reflect, as we proceed with the rest of our lives, let's remember that our lives should be spent in seeking the love of Allah to better Quartal and not being caught exerting ourselves in things other than that, you know? And with the Niyat, we know, dear brothers, we can engage ourselves in all of the things, all of the activities of life. But with the appropriate Niyat, these things can also be an expression of our love for Allah, our desire to follow the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and our desire to gain the love of Allah. You see? And so Allah Tabaraka Ta'ala is training us to have this awareness of why we're doing things, right? When we get ready to make the salat, we, 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 we talk about our intention, we, we state our intentions. Which prayer are we in? Sometimes you get so busy throughout the day, you don't know if it's door or asr. <laughs> you know what I mean? You moving so quick, you know, you got to you got to say it out loud. You know, sometimes you you you, you tuck beer and you're like, man, what what's a lot? What rakat? You know, so this is the thing where Allah is training us to be mindful of what is motivating us. Right. By making it an issue for us to remember our niya when we go to make the wudu. Right. When we make ghusl. Right. Always and always being mindful of what is motivating us. So that we're not living haphazardly with no awareness of why we're doing something. We have to have this awareness of what's motivating us at any given moment in our time, in our life. And anyone who exerts themselves in the effort of, of thinking about what's motivating them, you will see quite often that the heart is going 100 miles a minute. 
the heart is, is switching and it requires a constant vigilance in order to regulate it and make sure that we're, we're attempting to align ourselves with, with, with some niyat for Allah to better quotile. And the Prophet Sallallahu taught us to say Bismillah before we do anything. This is it. Alhamdulillah. I pray that there are many people here who are able to do that. I've actually tried to do that. That's a difficult thing to do for me. Alhamdulillah. May Allah help me and, and all of those who struggle to, to say Bismillah before we uh, put our hands to do anything. But it's a, it's a challenge, right? It's a challenge. And rightfully so. Because to gain the love of Allah to better quote ta'ala, we should have to exert ourselves. We should have to show our, our uh, uh, desire and our commitment for the love of Allah to better quote ta'ala. So dear brothers, before I sit, let us remember that this life should be spent in following the order of Allah as shown by Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And let us remind one another throughout our days as we come in contact with each other to exert ourselves in this way. Aqulu qali hadha wa astaghfirullah ali wa lakum fa astaghfiru inna hu huwa ghafur rahim. Bismillah alhamdulillah. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min hamadhati shayateen wa a'udhu bika rabbi an yahdurun. Nahmaduhu wa nasalli ala rasulihil kareem. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Dear brothers, just before, and sisters, just before I close, um, I wanted to speak briefly today about, <clears throat> excuse me, maintaining a healthy environment in our masajid. Alhamdulillah, dear brothers and sisters, we live in an age where mankind is going astray. There's all manner of perversions prevalent in our society, right? Uh, and there's new forms of of, balala, of of going astray that are manifesting every day. And so in reflecting on that, dear brothers and sisters, I'd like to you know, encourage us all to keep the masjid as a place that is a reflection of the healing and the uprightness and, and the normalcy that this world has lost, right? Brothers and sisters, I always, you know, from time to time, in order to check myself, when I come into the masjid, one of the things that I do is I say to myself, what if there's a person in the masjid right now that is a new Muslim that recently accepted Islam and is still forming their perception of what it means to be a Muslim, right? How would I behave? How would I treat this person? Right. I think we can all relate to that type of an experience where we want to make sure we show that person the best of character. Right. And dear brothers, it's, it's funny to me that we understand the need to show the best of ourselves in that scenario. But we get to the point where we don't feel that way about the average brother and sister. <laughs> Say, oh, you're an old Muslim. You don't, you know, <laughs> you can take it. You know what I mean? <laughs> This is how we treat each other, dear brothers, right? So um, it's very important that our masajid are always places where people can come out of the confusion and the perversion that we see in the world and find within the masjid a place of peace, of comfort, where they get to see the best of human characters still surviving in people, right? where love is still being exchanged amongst people. When you go out into world, into the world, there's a lot of apprehension, right? There's a lot of uncertainty. People not really knowing, you know, if they can trust the, the person next to them enough to, to let their guard down, you see? And so the masjid should be that place where the best of human character is on display at all times, right? Sometimes our masajid become a place where it's highly critical, you know, it becomes highly critical. And for those who are attempting to reform themselves, to rehabilitate themselves from a life perhaps spent outside of Islam, they might find an environment that is very critical, 
and it's not conducive for someone who's struggling to change their life. Dear brothers and sisters, the changing of the life is, is not an easy thing to do. You know, it requires a lot of effort and support. We all have those things in our life that if we could, we would change them right now. But more often than not, that's not how change happens to human beings. We don't turn on a dime, right? It's over the course of time with constant effort, with constant prayer. Somebody came to the Prophet Sallallahu and told them, told him about a man who commits a crime, who steals and then prays. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told him, he said, what about that person? And the Prophet said, you know, very soon his Salat will wean him off of that, that sin, right? And so we see in this hadith one uh, example that over time and with prayer, people change. And we have to ask ourselves, what role are we playing in helping our brothers and sisters to evolve over time? We can play a positive or a negative role in that process for one another, depending on how we engage and treat one another, dear brothers, right? Allah Tabarak wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَنَلُذِيَقَنَّهُمْ مِنَ الْعَذَابِ الْأَدْنَى دُونَ الْعَذَابِ الْأَكْبَرِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُونَ Right? That uh, um, he gives people the lower punishment before the greater, that happily they may return. So some people are engaged in this process. They're engaged in this life experience where Allah is rectifying them through their life experience. This is how perfect Allah Tabarak wa ta'ala is. Allah has tailored an experience for each and every one of us, right? That's perfect for our personality. That's perfect for our combination of, of stinginess and generosity. That's perfect for our balance of, of compassion and, 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 and ghadab and anger, right? You see? So we're all going through a life experience that Allah has tailored that by the end of it, inshallah ta'ala, it will, it will work to rectify us, right? And so we have to give some attention to the fact that we're all in this process together. We all have something to be ashamed about in front of Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala, right? We all have something that we're working on that is left undone, that we hope that inshallah will be rectified by the time we meet Allah Tabarak wa ta'ala. Allah says in the Quran that if he had punished the people for what they had earned, he would not leave a single living creature on the planet, right? He would not leave a single living creature. And so that's everybody, okay? That's every one of us. Allah Tabarak wa ta'ala has made it clear there's not a single one of us in the masjid, in the Muslim community, in the world, even a, a different species that would be safe if Allah Tabarak wa ta'ala were to punish us for what we did. So we should all come into the space with the attitude and the perception that we're all here working on ourselves. No one is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? No one can stand, and even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that he made uh, uh, a stick fire more than 70 times a day, right? And so we have to change the attitude with which oftentimes we come into the space so that even if we have to correct someone, it's coming from a place of mutual effort, right? If two people have a problem of smoking, right? Neither one of them can, can attack the other for that condition, right? You say, Man, you should stop smoking, man. That's bad for you. You say, man, you smoke too. I just saw you, right? But if that person comes and says, hey, man, you know, this is really bad for us. It's, it's, it's hurting our hearts. You know, it's hurting our lungs. We really need to stop this. That's a totally different interaction, right? It's one in which both of them would readily accept, you see? And so we have to engage one another in this space as as people who are mutually suffering from some type of sin that we need to get over. And not as those who, who, who some of us might, might not have any sins, sometimes the way, the way that we, we react. And I think, dear brothers, that we'll find that our space in the master will become more of a space where people can reform and people can find the encouragement that they need 
to move forward past those things that we might see. And in seeing things in our brothers, we should reflect on ourselves and find the things that within our own lives need to be put right. And as I close, you know, this I find to be one of the most salient characteristics in the Jama'ah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was his compassion, you know, and his tolerance for the people as they struggle with their, their moral uh, uh, infirmities, right? And that, I have to believe, served to help those people to get further along in their growth and development. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi a young man came to him once and said, you know, oh Prophet, give me permission to commit zina, <laughs> right? And the Prophet Sallallahu gave him beautiful counsel, right? That, when you think about it, didn't involve criticism. It didn't involve a criticism. He said, would you want somebody to do that with your mother? Would you want somebody to do that with your sister? No. Right? And so he made dua for him and put his hand on his chest. And that young man said, after that, I never had a desire for it. Look at the way that the Prophet said something help people. This is what oftentimes is missing. And in its place, we have an intense focus on criticism. Where did that ever become the Prophet Sallallahu chosen most method of, 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 of rectifying the people? Yes, it has its place. But shiron wa nadiron, right? Glad tidings and warning. But dear brothers, I submit to you that, that we need to be more of a, 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 a less critical and more compassionate. Or in Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, give us this. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, wa fil akhirati hasana, wa kina adab al-nar. Rabbana la tuzir kulubina, ba'da itadaytana, wa hablana min ludunka rahmatan, inna kanta wahab. ربنا آمنا فاغفر لنا وارحمنا وأنت خير الواهمين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يعمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكروا الله تعالى يذكركم ودعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله تعالى أعلى وعولى وعز وعجل وعتم وحب وأكبر والله يعلم ما تصدعون وأقيم الصلاة في announcements So, <clears throat> Assalamu alaikum brothers, sisters.